Welcome to Excite Home Church service this morning, Fano, on this very special Sunday, Easter Sunday. Church, I invite you right now to get up to your feet, to lift your hands high, gather the Fano around you, put down your coffee, and let's worship Jesus together. Good morning, family. It's about time we have some praise and worship. Yeah. I want to encourage you to get up off your seats. Get those hands clapping. Get those dance moves out. Oh. Let's praise our Jesus. Come on, I throw my hands. I throw my hands to the sky because I'm so alive and I want to bring you praise. I throw my hands to the sky because I'm so alive. do this, that we just get to worship Jesus in our own homes, and that we get to do that with our family and our children, and um, I just want to invite you in this time to really get your thoughts on heaven right now, that when we sing, we're thinking about what Jesus did on that cross for us, and that he did it just for you and I, so in this moment, Sunday. I just want to encourage you to just dig deep this morning. Come on, sing, I cast my mind. I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus fled and died for me. I see
the power of it and how much it actually um, it affects us. That you can now be free, and He's given us the keys, you know. But we're free, and He's ransomed us to live in His goodness, yeah. because of what you did, Jesus, that we are sons and daughters and you are the firstborn of many. We thank you that you are our older brother, our older sibling, our friend and our co-heir. We are co-heirs with you, Christ, all because of what you did. Father, this, this Sunday, we celebrate you more. We celebrate you more than ever this morning, Father. Every house every person with hands lifted high right now we sing your praises this morning father we declare your goodness over aotearoa we declare your goodness over our households we declare your goodness over your body the church here on earth and lord we would pray that we would bring you would bring heaven to earth here right here right now heaven on earth right now father we declare your presence in this place would just sweep through mighty, mighty name of Jesus, be with us now, in your name, amen.
Eastside Church family and to all our viewers online. I just want to wish you a happy Easter. And this morning, I'm going to share a short communion thought with you because we get to celebrate together in our own homes. And I want to talk about a promise and a problem and a provision. And in Mark chapter 9, verse 31, it says, Jesus is teaching his disciples and he said to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him and after three days he will rise. That's a promise. Now there was a problem because after the crucifixion, Jesus was put in a tomb. And the woman, there were women coming in Mark chapter 16 verse 2, it tells us that very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise. It's amazing, they were there just after sunrise and that's our April theme as a church this month is sunrise. They were on their way to the tomb, they were coming to anoint the body of Jesus and they were asking each other, they had a big problem, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? Now, you remember this was a dark time in history a real dark time. Their best friend and Lord and Saviour had just been crucified. The disciples were scared. They had gone away and they were basically locked up in a room for fear of the Jews. This was a tragedy, but God can turn a tragedy into a triumph. And in the often, there is often a problem before a provision. And in the Bible, we read that there was a desert before the promised land. There was a drought before the rain. There was a cross before the empty tomb. The hard place does not define you. The hard place reveals who you really are. Are you going to live fearful or are you going to choose to be filled with faith, to be faithful? And sometimes the problems that we go through in life are so big that's like a brick wall, like a, a stone wall or a big rock that we are facing and it just feels like it can never move. And you know, these women, their attention as they were walking to the tomb, their attention was all on the problem. Their focus had become this big problem and it tells us it was a large rock, it was big. And the more we focus on the problem instead of on Jesus, the difficulty becomes bigger and bigger. But God wants to remind us of his promises. He said, I will rise again in three days. What an amazing promise. In the provision, in verse four of the same chapter, it tells us, but when the woman looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. When you look to Jesus, you look up, you will get a clear focus. Isaiah 65 verse 24 says this, I will answer them, that's God, before they even call to me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. What a great promise. So the provision. You know, I was thinking of the story of when Jesus was up the Mount of Transfiguration and he had his three disciples, Peter, James and John there, and he was transfigured before them. And it says that he was seen talking with Elijah and Moses. And then God spoke to Jesus from this amazing light. And the disciples were so freaked out, it says they fell to the ground and they were fearful. But it says there that Jesus came along and he touched them. And as they looked up to Jesus, he said, do not fear. Do you know, fear robs us from seeing only Jesus. We get our eyes fixed and focused on everything else and all the distractions around and on the problems, we do not see Jesus in the midst of it. But God has a great provision and just like he did for this woman, he rolled the stone away. He can roll all your problems away when you focus and put your trust in him. And I just wanted to leave this with you and then we'll take communion together. Jesus was placed in a tomb with a stone covering the entrance. 
there was one way in and one way out. The way was blocked and the exit obstructed. And yet Jesus came out. Whatever life places in front of you cannot hold back what God has placed inside of you. Resurrection power. Isn't it amazing? The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of us. What a powerful, powerful promise. So look up to Jesus and see your problems roll away. So we're going to take communion this morning. So we're going to take the bread and the grape juice and I'm just going to pray. Father, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your body that was given at the cross, that you took our place and you bore our punishment and pain. Thank you for the blood that was shed for us, the blood that removes all guilt so that there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. We thank you that you conquered over death and that we can conquer and have victory over everything that we go through in life. Thank you for resurrection. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's take communion together. Take the bread. Thank you, Jesus. And we'll take the grape juice. Just want to wish you all a really happy Easter. Bless you all. Here at Excite, we love to give, and it's important more now than ever, so we as a church are actively supporting those in need, and your generosity enables us to do that. So we have two separate accounts, one our main account, and the second is to our overseas missions. We want to thank and appreciate you for your continued generosity. For all the details, see the slide coming up next. Well, good morning again. I trust you've all had a great week and this week's gone well for you. What a great morning to be together uh, this morning on this Easter morning. And um, many people I've been hearing from throughout the last week have been enjoying the blessings and the provision of God in their lives in a very miraculous way at this time of lockdown. So as they walk by faith and trust in Him, they're seeing great things happen in their lives. And I want to tell you that our God is a God to be trusted in. Well, as I said last week, the theme for this month uh, is sunrise. And what an appropriate theme on this Easter Sunday morning. Today, we remember how that Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. With so much death around us today and around the world, it's awesome to be able to remember that there was a resurrection. Jesus not only died, he rose again from the dead. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. He's alive today at the right hand of God, and He is our Savior. Well, last week we talked about uh, our Father, how that we need to spend time with our Father. We spoke about our Father's presence, how He wants to, speak, to spend time with us. We spoke about our Father's provision and our Father's protection. And this week, I want us to speak about our faith. Faith is a wonderful thing, but before we do, uh, let's pray. Father, we just thank you that we can spend this time today together, this Easter, remembering the Lord and all that he has not only done, but all that he is to us. Father, we thank you for the glorious message of the gospel, how that Christ died for our sins, he was buried and he rose again the third day. Father, bless every hearer today. We pray that the faith levels in each one that is listening will rise and that they'll reach out and touch you uh, by faith, Father, and receive all that you have for them today. In Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Amen. Very good. Well, the theme for today or the, uh, the message title for today is Our Faith. And it says, faith comes through hearing and hearing through the word of God. And the first thing I want to speak about is faith's foundation. 
faith's foundation. Well, Jesus is the absolute source and foundation of our faith. He is the rock on which our lives are built, and he is life itself. In fact, John said about him, he said, he that has the son has life. And what he was meaning there, he was talking about not just an existence in this world, but he was talking about eternal life, an enduring life, a life that lasts for eternity. You know, I've been hearing on the news with this uh, coronavirus uh, that it is believed that if a person has had the virus and then they recover, uh, that they can donate blood and then they take the plasma from the blood and they can put it into other people to build their immunity and develop the required antibodies uh, that they need to fight the virus. And that was really amazing. I was thinking about this and I was thinking, wow, think of that. The life of the flesh is in the blood. You can use your blood, a person's blood that's had the virus and recovered from it. You can use it and donate it to someone else. Then I thought about our Lord Jesus Christ and how that he's been through death. And because he's been through death and risen again, that we can receive life from him. And his life is perfect life. His life is sin resistant. He, he's resistant to the virus of sin. And the Bible tells us that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. How amazing is that? How important that the Son of God rose again from the dead and that we can have faith in Him and we can receive Him as our Lord and Savior. You know, when we're born again through faith in Christ, it's just as though we've been transfused with, a, with Jesus' life. Can you imagine that? Transfused with Jesus' life. And... Uh, you might ask, well, how come everyone else was held in the grave, but the grave was unable to hold Jesus? And I want to tell you it was because he never sinned. And um, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. But then it goes on to say, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Praise God for the but there. Yes, the wages of sin is death. Jesus never sinned. Death had no claim on him, but God wanted to give the gift of a life that was sin resistant. He wanted to transfuse us with the life of Christ. And how do we get that? By faith in him. Faith foundation is found in Jesus alone, and we can receive him as our Lord and Savior and be transfused with that life. So how do we qualify for this life, for this eternal life? How do we qualify for this transfusion, you could say? And in 1 Timothy 1 and verse 15, Paul says to Timothy, he says, This is a faithful saying, and it's worthy of all acceptation. That means for everyone to receive it. And he goes on to say that Christ Jesus came into the world to save who? Sinners. To save sinners. And Paul went on to say, of whom I am chief. I'm the greatest of sinners. You know, Paul... Uh, really was responsible for murder. He was, he was the one that was there consenting to Stephen, uh, who was the first martyr in the New Testament, through his death. And they laid the, the clothes, of the ones that stoned Stephen, they laid their clothes down at Paul the Apostle's feet. His name then was Saul. But it got changed to Paul after he got saved. But Paul said he was the chief of sin sinners, and the way in which he qualified to be transfused with the life of Jesus was to be a sinner. And all of us who've received the Lord Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that was our qualification. We were needy, lost sinners, and Jesus died, he was buried, but he rose again. And we have his life, his eternal life, because we've received him. Now, Jesus spoke to Martha, who she was a sister of Mary, and Lazarus, and Lazarus was her brother in the New Testament. And in John 11, verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he's speak, speaking of spiritual life here, being raised from spiritually again, born again uh, in the spirit. And praise God, all who receive Jesus, receive that eternal life. Praise God. So faith's foundation is so important. Now our faith, the second point I want to speak about is Faith's freedom. In John 8, verse 32, it says, And you shall know the truth, 
and the truth shall make you free. Now, Jesus is the truth. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And it brings freedom when we know him as our Lord and Savior. We let, when we let him be Lord over every situation, it brings freedom from sin's penalty when we receive him as our Lord and Savior. It brings freedom from sin's power. And John 8 verse 36 says, uh, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Praise God for freedom, life, and power in our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I've been over to Africa a few times, and um, whenever we go over there, we always go out in the safari parks. And um, what we see over there a lot of is uh, medium-sized antelopes called impala, African impala. And, and they're amazing, uh, beautiful creatures, and um, they can run very fast and jump very high. And apparently, that even though they're not very big, they can jump up to 10 feet high. And if they jump forward, they can cover a distance of up to 30 feet in one leap, which is incredible. Yet these magnificent creatures, these impala, they can be kept enclosed in any zoo with a three foot high wall. Now, why is that when they can jump 10 feet? The animals will not jump over the wall if they can't see where their feet will fall. It's incredible. They can keep enclosed even though they could so easily leap over the wall. They don't have the faith to believe that, that they'll be safe when they jump. Wow. Whereas faith brings us freedom because it is the ability to trust what we cannot see. What we cannot see with the natural eyes. Even we don't see the answer and we're going through something in life, some trial or test uh, or something that we never expected and we reach out and trust the Lord by faith. We commit our way to him and let him sort it out for us. And there was a woman like that who really had faith in the Lord in the New Testament and the Gospels and when Jesus was going around doing all the heal healing, she was a woman with an issue of blood. We read about it in Mark chapter 5 and verse 25 and it says there, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. And then verse 27, it says, When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Verse 29, immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. This woman, there were many around the Lord pressing in around him. In fact, when he stopped, he said to his disciples, who touched me? And they said, well, that's ridiculous. There's people, there's hundreds of people crowding around you. They're bumping into you all day. What do you mean who touched you? And he said, no, someone has actually touched me because I felt something go out from me, virtue or healing. And um, this woman didn't just touch him and bump into him. She, her faith touched him. She received an immediate healing, an immediate answer to her faith, because she touched him by faith. She knew, she said, if I only just touch his clothes, I will be healed. She had been suffering for 12 years. She had looked for help everywhere else, but she came to the Lord and she totally believed on him. She must have heard about him and uh, she didn't want to just brush up against him. Even though there were obstacles there, she pushed through the crowd. She got right to him and touched the hem of his garment. And he really, he stopped. He felt that. And he knew that the healing had gone out of him. My question to you this morning is, are you brushing up against the Lord? Or are you having faith in him? Is your faith touching him? Rather than just brushing up, knowing about him, are you really reaching out by faith? Faith will bring, that sort of faith that reaches out and touches the Savior will bring you freedom. It'll bring you life, liberty, power, whatever circumstance you're going through. It'll give you results and miracles and the answer. Whatever you're going through in life, no matter how difficult it is, God has the answer for you and he will lead you through it. This woman pushed her way through the crowd. Now the crowd really is, um, you could say it's all the broken dreams and her past failures and 
and uh, everything that was pushing against her, like the thought that nothing will change. I'll just be, I've been like this way for 12 years. Uh, uh, nothing will change. The way it's been is the way it'll always be. And um, those sort of thoughts are like the people that were keeping her from the Lord. There's so many things that go on in our life, uh, even negative words that are spoken over us, or we speak over ourselves that will keep us from reaching out by faith to the Lord and receiving our miracle, receiving the answer uh, that he has for us. And many in life are waiting for God to touch them. They're saying, if, if God really wanted to, he could touch me. He could heal me. He could, he could do this. He could change my circumstances or give me this answer or that answer. And, um, but have you ever stopped to think that God might be waiting for you to reach out and touch him? Reach out by faith and touch the Lord. Faith's freedom. Faith will bring you freedom. It'll set you free. You know, Jesus stopped. He was the creator of the universe. And just like he stopped and said, who touched me? Your faith could actually stop the creator of the universe. Have faith in God. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The third thing I want to speak about is faith's force. Or faith's power, faith's force. That's right. Faith's force, not space force. It sounds like space force, and many uh, make rockets and go up to the moon. There's many man, uh, man made rockets. Uh, many people have landed on the moon. Um, they have denied the force of gravity. Uh, so the rockets are that powerful uh, when they take off that they defy gravity and they push people all the way to the moon. Amazing at what man can do through um, space force. But faith is a force as well. And it has great power. And um, that's what man can do with rockets. But um, what about eagles? That lovely bird that soars on its wings way up high in the canyon on the wind currents. You know, Isaiah uh, wrote um, in Isaiah 40 and verse 31, he said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as an eagle. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Sorry. And so just like eagles soar high above the uh, canyon on the air current, so those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength and mount up with wings as an eagle. And um, if we have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, what a difference uh, that makes in our lives. And if we look back to the Old Testament, there were those who men, great men of God who, who stood in faith. And I just remember a few of them there. There was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, they were taken captive, gone down to Babylon. And uh, they were young men, men of God, who stood strong uh, in their faith. And one day, King Nebuchadnezzar made this great golden image, and he wanted them to bow down and worship the image. And they said, we can't do this. We will only worship the Lord our God. He's the one that'll deliver us if he wants to, if he wants to, and he's able to deliver us. And so the, he, he warned them that if they didn't bow down, he would throw them into the fiery furnace. Then he made it seven times hotter. And eventually the Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego said, no, we cannot bow down. And he threw them in a rage into the furnace, but they didn't die. They believed in their God. Their faith was so powerful, so strong. And it was their faith uh, that it saved them. And um, King Nebuchadnezzar saw that there were four men in the fire, not three. And he said the fourth one looked like the Son of God. No matter what you're going through in life, the Lord is with you. He'll walk through it with you. He'll, he'll answer your prayers. If you have faith in him, if you trust in him, just believe and receive the answer to your prayers. Praise God. Daniel was another one. He was down there in Babylon as well. And... Um, he, tr he was a strong, wise young man who, man who trusted in the Lord. He prayed three times a day and there were those that hated him for it. And um, they plotted against him and they got him thrown in a den of lions. And um, they were wicked men that did that. But even though these lions were hungry and normally they'd kill the person immediately, Daniel was thrown into this den and he trusted in his God. And the next morning he was still sitting in the den with the lions and not eaten. And he said that his God had sent an angel who had shut the lion's mouth. It's a wonderful story of faith. And so faith is very, very powerful. Faith's force. It's a powerful thing.
You know, I'll go out for a walk um, a lot at the moment during this lockdown period. And um, this morning I was startled by a couple of blackbirds that swooped down. They were chasing each other and they flew within a foot of me. I didn't even see them coming up on me, but all I felt was the rush of the wind and I heard their wings go past in the wind and I was very startled. Actually, I'm quite surprised. It was such a shock to for this, them to come that close. Never experienced that uh, before. And that's often what life dishes out to us in, uh, in the natural. Not, not, I'm not talking about the blackbirds, but there's things that come our way that we didn't expect. And we start off through the day and it's going well, but then something happens. And it, it takes our gaze away from the Lord. It, 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 it challenges our faith. And sometimes fear arises or we get startled or we get distracted onto something and uh, we lose sight of the Savior at times. But God wants us to trust in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and in Jude 1 and 20 we read, But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Faith, we need to build it up. Faith is such a powerful thing. Have faith in God. Trust in him. I want to speak about our faith today. And I want to encourage you that this powerful thing called faith is so important to us. We walk by faith, not by sight. And uh, faith is our connection with the, the eternal things of God. And we, by faith, uh, follow him and walk in his ways and do his will. Praise God. So it's time for us to rise up in faith and have a fighting spirit. And don't be put off by the disappointments of life that come your way. Any resistance that comes your way. Anything you suffer that you're not aware of. God will lead you through it. Have faith in God. Be strong. Kia kaha. That's that word. Be strong. Stand strong in faith. See, God can uh, do more than we can even ask or even think. In Isaiah 43 and verse 19, it says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. With, I can make a road where there is no road. I can make rivers where there is only desert. I want to do a new thing. And God's saying that to you in your life. Even though you might have barrenness and, and desert-like conditions or not knowing which direction to take or where to walk, where to go next, look to the Lord. Have faith in God. He will guide you. He will bless you. He will do more than you can even ask or think. Faith is a powerful thing. You know, as I walk out each day and go for a walk down the footpath, there's one property I go past and they very kindly put a sign out there to encourage people and it says, brighter days ahead. Three simple words, brighter days ahead with a smiley faith, just to encourage people. And I was looking at this, I think that's, that's very nice. But you know what? God doesn't just want you to have brighter days ahead. He wants you to have brighter days right now. And if you walk by faith in him, if you trust in him at all times, if you look to him and not to yourself, well, then you will have bright, bright days. So our faith is so important. I want to encourage you to have faith in God. First thing, faith's foundation, faith's freedom, and faith's force or faith's power. Praise God. Be encouraged. I trust that your week goes well this week. I know God is with you and for you. And uh, I just want you to be encouraged to keep trusting in the Lord. Have faith in God. He's got great things for you this week. I know he wants to do great things in this 2020 year. This is a great year. And uh, we want clarity of vision. The vision that comes from having faith in God. Praise God. Be blessed. What another fantastic message from Pastor Paul this morning. Church, we don't want to end this service without giving you an opportunity to receive Jesus yourself. If something resonated with you in the message this morning, or if you felt God knocking on the door of your heart, I want to lead you in a simple prayer. You see, in Romans 10.9, it says that we just need to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. And believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead and we will be saved. So I would love to and be honored to lead you in a simple prayer to receive Jesus into your heart right now, this morning. So just repeat after me if that's you. Dear Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for going to the cross and dying 
to remove all separation between myself and God. Right in this moment, I turn from myself and commit my heart to you. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe that God raised you from the dead. Thank you that I am now a new creation in you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, if that was you that said that prayer with me this morning, I just want to congratulate you on the beginning of a brand new start, a brand new life. You are made new in Him now. And I want to encourage you to connect with somebody to walk with you through this. You can do that right now by texting YES to the number on the screen. And also, we have life groups running even now for you to connect to. So if you are interested in finding out about how you can connect, even at this time where you're stuck in your house, we want to enable you to do that. So please email info at excite.org.nz and we'll connect you to somebody or connect you to a life group or give you all the information you need to continue and walk on this new journey of yours. God bless you. Thank you for joining us again for an awesome Sunday service at home. We hope you enjoyed it and we would love to see you next week. If you'd like to know any more information about us, please visit our website at excite.org.nz. Have a blessed week.